What's up, guys? Go to get my book at truckdriverbooks.com. Big Ken here. Hopefully, you can hear me. And let's get down to business. So, let's get down to this new bill that's coming out. It, title of this in story. Uh, the battle to kill ELDs. <laughs> Will this new bill exempt you from ELDs? <gasps> Will it exempt you? A new bill in the House of, in the House has been filed. <clears throat> excuse me, in the House of Representatives has been filed, and basically it will exempt trucking companies and owner operators from the logging ELD mandate. It is sponsored by Colin Peterson and Greg Jaiforte. Uh It's a bipartisan bill that is known as a Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. Let me repeat that. The bill is known as the Small Carry Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. If passed, it would exempt all companies with 10 trucks or fewer having to comply to the EOD mandate. The bill is similar to, the re- to a request made by the OOIDA, but actually gives carriers even more leeway. The OOIDA requested to ask that the carriers with under 27 million in revenue, well, that's actually a good way to look at it in the financial, uh, be exempt from four or five years. The proposed bill would exempt small carriers and on operators from having to comply indefinitely. Peterson and Jai Ford have introduced an ELD focused bill on Wednesday. While the agricultural haulers already enjoy a limited ELD compliance delay, the new bill would exempt them permanently. Let me, let me repeat, this bill is to exempt permanently. This is not a temporary bill as many others have been suggested. The electronic logging devices are another layer of unnecessary red tape that continues to tie up truck drivers and put livestock and Montana live <laughs> in Montana livelihoods at risk. Jai Ford said their measures. <laughs> oh, well, they get a little ridiculous with these speeches. I'm sorry. This measure is a step into the right direction as we reduce the burden of this mandate placed on Montana, small trucking opportunities and farmers and ranchers. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Look, so bottom line, it's a permanent bill. Uh, and let's just kind of go over it. Uh, it's sponsored by Colin Peterson and Greg. I'm Hopefully I'm saying his name right. John Jai Forte. Uh, it's a bipartisan bill, which means you got Democrat and Republican. And it is called the Small Carrier Electronic Logging Man, uh, excuse me, the Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. The Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. That does not roll off the tongue. <laughs> but anyway, so this is to be permanent. Um, I think it's a pretty good idea. I actually kind of like the OIDAs basing it on income. But look, the real reason these bills are being introduced, let's be honest, is money from the people that we haul for, right? They don't give a damn about our plight. (laughs) They don't give a damn about us. But they damn sure care about their rising cost of shipping, which part of it is their fault. They keep us tied up in docks. If they didn't keep us tied up in docks and got us the hell out of there, they would make they would have wouldn't have to uh, spend so much money on truck drivers. They cause their own problem. They don't really need a bill. They need to get off their ass and get us out of the docks. Literally, I I don't know if anybody's ever thought about this, but let's say there's twenty thousand trucks in an area, but let's say those same trucks. A tied up in let's say I don't know five hundred of no 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 five hundred of yeah we'll go five hundred out of that thousands of trucks are tied up in docks because that's the real deal that's what's really causing your rate to go up you ain't got to pay these you know politicians and give them a little side money and all that because at the end of the day right if you just got us out of the docks your rates would probably go down. 
I don't understand why. But anyway, the thing, the only thing about this bill is you always have to remember something that most people don't know about trucking. And that is most people think we're like GM Ford Chrysler that, you know, there's one big trucking company out here and that's the only people you have to worry about. The truth is this trucking industry is not run by one person. We all know that it's, it's a very, it's largely small carriers. So the problem with this bill, <clears throat> excuse me, is that it would exempt the majority of the industry. <laughs> I mean, most truck drivers don't have, especially on operators. I mean, I don't know why I said truck drivers. Obviously, on operators don't have more than 10 trucks. So it would exempt all most of the industry, quite a bit of the industry, the own operators. It would only be a uh, burden to the mega carriers. So and obviously the mega carriers aren't going to allow that. You know, they, the Trucker Alliance already has been up in roar trying to get hair follicle tests to be the only test that we take. Yeah, if you hadn't heard about that, they're trying that again, except now they're trying to get a bill in Congress to do it since they couldn't get it through OOIDA, you know, I mean, not OOIDA, I'm sorry, but through DOT uh, or FMCSA, whatever you want to call them. Bottom line is they wouldn't approve it. Reasons because hair follicle tests are not regulated. When you walk around, your hair can absorb particles in the air and send false positives. And it seemed like they wanted the false positives as some type of reassurance that you people are on drugs because they're trying to stop heroin truck drivers. Even though I'm pretty sure if I took truck drivers and lined them up and I said, all right, all the people who are drinking and driving and we had lie detector tests, let's say we had 100 percent lie detector tests, raise their hand. I'm pretty sure I would get quite a few truckers, right? But if I said all the truckers on heroin raised their hand and we could tell they were lying, we would not have a lot of truckers. Alcohol, cell phones, and obesity are the number one drugs in America. Heroin is a problem, but compared to cell phones, I have seen teenagers walk in front of cars. A drug addict will nod out on the sidewalk, not walk in front of a car. <laughs> Okay, because they're catching an imaginary animal on a computer that's not there. All right. That's crazy. (laughs) But so I know I messed up a little bit on the story, but I hope you guys get it. So we have the the um, the bill that's possibly going through that if you are a truck driver and you drive for a small company or you're an own operator could exempt you from the hours of service. As far as the electronic mandate. That bill is called the Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. Small Carrier Electronic, excuse me, Small Carrier Electronic Logging Device Exemption Act. Now, hopefully this will be passed. I'm rooting for anything that makes our job a little easier. But hey, uh, the real reason this is, like I said before, and I'm going to cover it again, is you, the big people we haul for, this politicians talking about Montana making grandiose speeches, but it's not about Manta- Montana and the rest of these places. It's about big business, okay? It's not about the individual rancher. It's about big business. And big business, if you just got us out of your docks, you wouldn't have this problem, okay? So a quick one today. Figure out, update you guys on what's going on with the ELDs. I'll talk to you guys later. Truck Driver101.com. Truck Driver101.com, people. How's it going? What are you doing? <laughs> so, anyway, so as always, it's Big Ken. I've been in trucking forever and pretty much we did a book. If you're new to trucking, you want to get into trucking, you can go to truckdriverbooks.com. You can type that in your Google. It'll take you to a book, two bucks ninety nine, and it'll get you into trucking, keep you from avoiding hit pitfalls, teach you a lot of things that I've known and learned about trucking. So, what we're going to talk about today, and often I do news today, is we'll, we'll be talking about energy management, and we will be talking about the new push by the Trucker Alliance. So, carriers push for hair testing due to opioid use. This is the excuse they're using. And so the Trucker Alliance is looking for Congress to pass a law 
which will require hair testing and instead of urine testing to determine drug use. According to the group, the hair testing screens out those drivers who abuse will screen out those drivers who abuse opioids. So that's that's what they're saying. Also known the formula name the trucker uh, the formal name of the Trucker Alliance for dri- Alliance for Driver Safety and Security. The Trucker Alliance is made up largely of mega carriers. Members include US Express, Swift, Knight, Knight Transportation, Swift Transportation, JB Hunt, Maverick Transport, and many other mega carriers. I'll name them. I've talked about those dudes before. So large carriers tried in the past to get the FMCSA to allow hair testing instead of urine testing, since they say that it is more accurate. Now, this hotly debate. The reason it's a hot debate is because hair testing is a bit. How do I put it? It's inaccurate. It's overly accurate. You got to understand when we when you get a drug test, it's testing for substances in your hair. It's not necessarily testing for drugs. Right. Um. And the problem is, yes, you will get more um, accurate or, or um, what am I trying to think of? Positive results. In other words, people will fail the drug test more than in a urine test. But that is that doesn't actually mean that person was using drugs. For instance, by the, when this discussion originally happened, they were talking about the fact that if you pass someone smoking marijuana, this could get inside your hair for those with porous hair, le negros, <laughs> those like us with porous hair can suck that up and test positive for marijuana. So the Trucker Alliance, one of the, the people of the Trucker Alliance back then said, well, then it's giving a true, right, uh, um, accurate account of the type of people you're around. Yeah. So it's rich guys, you know looking down upon you cockroaches so during this story and according to the trucker alliance using a standard urine test opioid use would be undetectable within a few hours with hair testing the window widens to 90 days so you if in other words you still could take drugs right and use hard drugs but you have to wait 90 days that's what they're saying but the problem is they're counting false positives as positives they're 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 and that's one of the reasons this is not they don't want hair testing the other reason is that urine testing is federally regulated uh, it's regulated hair testing is not All right so it's so you have a an unregulated test that is more likely to give false positives. So then this, this is the part I love too. Uh, This is from Maverick. This is from, um, cracks. We've had, and this is a statement from Maverick. We've had 145 drivers at Maverick who failed their hair test after passing their urine test, those 145 drivers are working at other companies, explained Dean Newall, vice president of safety and driver training at Maverick USA. They're running up and down the road with our families, with our families. That is not acceptable. First of all, just because if you pass the urine test, and you fail the hair test does not mean you're on drugs. It doesn't. It just means that one test it had a positive. It, that doesn't. That doesn't even. It came up positive for drugs. It doesn't mean anything. Certain shampoos you could have passed somebody with drugs, and also you do have the right to stop taking drugs. <laughs> yes. Um. This uh, the um, what's this guy's name again? Dean here. Vice President of Safety and Driver Training at Maverick USA. The problem I have with people like this is, one, he's assuming all 145 people were positive and that it wasn't a false positive. The only real way to get a true, accurate test to see if you actually use drugs is a blood test. They're not pushing for that. (laughs) Right. I don't know what the Trucker Alliance's real game is. Is it to lure 
the amount of truck drivers out there because they already have a the trucker shortage and if they do that to try to raise prices or is it to get more subsidies from the u.s government is it about autonomous trucks did you get the government to subsidize the autonomous truck program because they're just too dire need with opioid addicted drivers they can't stop them but this is a little but back to dean dean here 154 drivers that are working for other carriers. First of all, he assumes that the other carriers didn't also hair test. They could have. The people could have stopped taking drugs and went and worked for somebody else. 90 days later, we all know that this is what we just read. I just read it. The hair test test within 90 days. So that means as the drug use goes further and further out, they can go to another carrier after they've been terminated from Maverick for drug use and go there and say, I tested positive for drugs, take another test, possible hair test. He doesn't mention whether they took a hair test at these other carriers or not. And test negative, you know, not have the drugs in their system. Why is that a problem? And again, this is, you know, it's this, this statement of fear. You know, oh, they're next to your families. Oh. <laughs> While every truck stop in America sells alcohol, by the way, all of them do. Every truck stop I've been to, well, not all, I shouldn't say every truck stop in America, but a large number of truck stops in America sell alcohol every day. If we were deeply concerned about this, how come we aren't stopping that? How come you aren't saying TA, Petro, until you pull that beer off those shelves, we will not haul your freight (laughs) because that's a drug Oh, no, no, no. It's an accepted drug. All right. And and last time I checked, quite a few drivers every year kill families drunk driving. Yeah. Oh, we're not dealing with that, though, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because that's everybody's drug, alcohol. But back to the story. So we got the overreaction from uh, Dean Newell. This is what scares me about this is this completely obsession that if you use drugs, you should just be blackballed. You should just go away forever. How dare you? Why? You're not the, the most evil person in the world. You use drugs. That That's it. You're not evil. You're not diabolical. But anyway. So, continuing on with the story here. Uh, there are multiple questions raised about the efficacy of hair testing, including whether or not it is more likely to produce a false positive than other methods. Ask the FMCSA to help them save money by dropping urine testing requiring a requirement and did not work in the past. In other words, the FMCSA looked at it and looked at the fact that there are false positives that they're not mentioning in the story. And it is more likely to give a false positive due to the fact that your hair, unlike the urine in your body, is exposed to more things out in the air, obviously, and shampoos and everything else. But whatever. Uh, they so the trucker alliance is lobbying congress to take matters and, and steps further so according to lane kid the managing director of the trucker alliance congress is expected to introduce legislation requiring hair testing in january 2019 now here's the thing even though if they introduce legislation this is the part that i, <laughs> I they didn't say just because they introduced this as a requirement doesn't mean hair urine testing is going to go away <laughs> they right so i don't know why they would want to have two tests they're now required to do which both are the most inaccurate ones urine being inaccurate Hair being more inaccurate because it is exposed, your hair is exposed to the environment around it. You're washing your body with soaps and water and things that come from other places. All these things can influence a hair drug test. Now, blood is the only way to truly get an actual count. It's the only way to know whether you are using drugs actively currently now. (laughs) It's the only way to know. But that never comes up. So this isn't to me. It's not even about. It's not about people endangering your families and going to kill you (gasps) next to you, your family. No, it's because if it was, like I said, we would be talking about the alcohol use in this industry. Right. Which is a much bigger problem than opioid use. 
but it really is a, a weird thing. So we'll see in 2019. If it goes into legislation, suggestion from an older driver, shave your head. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Shave your head. If you have to give them hair, give them pubic hair. It was it is less likely to turn up false positive. That is the smartest thing you can do. Right. Because what they're doing now is just more dumb. They basically have a test. And the funny part is you can still find shampoos and all types of stuff that are supposed to help you pass a hair drug test. They're out there. Like, it's not like you still won't get this problem. It's the only thing I can think of is they like the idea that the hair testing is less regulated. Right. Because there's a certain amount of of the drug that has supposed to appear, but you have to remember, like, I can't remember what it is, but anyway, it's a certain amount that has to appear uh, in the test, a certain amount of the drug that has to appear in the test or whatever they're testing for, the chemical, the mineral, whatever they're testing for, the actual thing, because that's what they're testing for. They're not really testing for opiates. That's bullshit. They're testing for chemicals. They're testing for trace amounts of certain things that are contained within those chemicals, but they can get a false positive. And the thing about that is the hair is still exposed. (laughs) It's exposed to everything. But anyway, enough of all that said, shave your head, (laughs) shave your head, give them pubic hair. Your pubic hair is less exposed to the environment around you. If you have a choice, give them that hair. (laughs) Okay. I know it sounds sick and disgusting and twisted, but I'm telling you, you do not want to go with your hair that was at a crappy hotel, okay? Or you just passed Joe Blow and them smoking weed or somebody smoking weed, so smoking some uh, some crack or whatever, right? It's literally, give them pubes, <laughs> okay? Sounds crazy, I know. <sighs> that was nuts. But that's what they're pushing for. So 2019... If you a truck driver and you think you're gonna keep getting by with that urine, uh, that urine passing uh, test there, uh, that little trick you can do, you know, when you take the the little drink of the stuff and it dries your kidneys out, it's not going to work in the future. You're going to have to get the shampoo. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It, there's still ways to avoid the test. There's still ways to get around it, but I don't know why they consider that the only way that there is no test to get around it is blood. That's the only way. There's no way around blood. No way. They will know that you use drugs. And even then, you have, to me, it's like you have the right to stop using drugs. You do. You have the right to change. You do. You have the right to wake up next day and be like, I do not want to be a crackhead. I don't want to be an opioid user. I don't want to smoke marijuana anymore. People do this every day. I used to work with a guy who once test positive with a urine test for drugs, came back 90 days later and tested negative because he no longer used drugs, people. That's how that works. You don't have you can stop using drugs, but it seems like the trucker alliance. It all it just always seems like they're trying to increase the turnover rate. And I just don't know why. But anyway, enough of all that. Let's move on. Energy management. Energy management is one of the most important things you deal with in trucking because when you roll in at night, those who've had to go night upon night upon night, and I do this. I do this, people. I roll night upon night upon night. And I will tell you the greatest thing I stopped doing, which was eating. Eating. Eating requires energy. Young cats always email me telling my man it's night. I can't, I can't make it through the night, man. I can't. Yeah, they want me to drive it like this. Eight, nine, ten o'clock. Oh my God. It's, it's, I'm not going to make it again. And the thing is, to get through night driving, what you have to do is you have to stop eating. Eating is, it requires your body has to digest that food, so it sends blood to your stomach. And that requires energy. That's why people get the itis. They get sleepy. That's your body digesting all that fat and grease and sugar and all that crap. Cut that crap out. When I try, when I go to work, I eat literally before my shift starts and that I do not eat until the end of my shift. That, that usually I don't drive 
14 hours. Well, I don't really drive 14 hours a day. I, it usually is going, by the time I get home and all the crap I, or all the other stuff I got to do, it's going to be like 12, 13, 14 hours, something like that, right? But by the time I get home and I get something to eat again, I've had, uh, literally my energy is going to be high the whole time. The other part is get you sleep. A lot of people try to tell you that naps won't help you. They will. They help me all the time. So if you're a young cat, you're trying to figure out how to get through that night, stop eating before you shift. Eat before you shift. Caffeine management. Caffeine is a funny drug that um, when you drink coffee, it lasts six hours to get the caffeine out of your blood. So that means if you drink coffee in the middle of your shift, it is going to linger when you're trying to sleep. It's going to fuck up your sleep. You don't want it to do that. Drink coffee at the beginning of your shift. And if you, coffee makes you feel sleepy at any time, stop, get some sleep, let that load be late. At the end of the day, though, that means you and coffee aren't going to work anymore. Coffee tolerance happens all the time. I've had to stop drinking coffee because when I drank it, it made me sleepy. Literally. It can have that effect on people. So you need to stop drinking it and tell you try intermittent fasting. Look it up. This is not health advice, but it is advice of how I manage my energy. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's one of the best things I ever started doing. You will literally get tons and tons of energy that way. Allowing your body to burn all that fat that you already have. Right. Unless you're one of those skinny guys. Yeah. That being said. Another thing I want to talk about is when is it time to give up in trucking? If you are at the point where you're not moving forward, in other words, you've done OTR, you're you're over OTR, you're through with it, you're tired of it, it's time to move on, and you're not motivated to move on, it may be time to get out. Right. You've given it your try. It's after that year, you should be moving on. It is amazing how you can talk to drivers who have set OTR for years, for years. Miserable. Makes no sense to me. And they don't try dedicated. They don't try moving to another company. They it just they just sit. I don't know why you won't why you won't be unhappy. <laughs> why you won't be unhappy? That don't make no sense. Don't be unhappy. If you are not happy with the carrier you're with, walk on out that door. Walk on out that door. (laughs) Walk on out that door. Step out. Get another job. It's ridiculous. And this also bleeds into, you know, not taking this. A lot of this happens. You sit out there and on that road, you start eating that fast food. You start eating during your shift. That shit, if you don't stop eating, I'm telling you, if you don't limit the calories you keep intaking, it will make you blow up. And the bigger you get, the more depressed you'll become. And the more depressed you become, the more likely you are to sit like an idiot and be unhappy. Change your job. Change your job. I get emails from dudes all the time. I've been doing this over the road for a year, man, and I'm unhappy. Change your job. You got the year experience. Go somewhere else. Bounce. Quit. (laughs) That's how it works. You did it. You achieved it. Leave. Don't just sit there. What are you waiting on? It's not going to get better. (laughs) It's why I tell guys all the time. OTR is an ends to a means. Do it if you have to, but. You don't want to make that your life. OTR is insanity. Telling you, get a dedicated account. Get if you if you want to do OTR, at least get OTR dedicated. See, what happens is let me explain why you start going to the same places. You create these things. They're called friends, (laughs) not just the people you talk to on the phone, but actual people that know you. You see on a regular basis. They're very nice to be around. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then you talk to people. Then they give you their number. You give them your, your number. You have conversations, people. 
right? Not just with the people at home and far, far away, but people right there. So if you OTR, at least do OTR dedicated. But if you can, if you can get your brain to work, you're supposed to do a year, remember? And you were supposed to quit and find a local job. And then the thing is, a lot of guys get local. And they start talking about, well, you know, it ain't working out. And I ain't making no money. <laughs> I, I just ain't making the money that I used to mix. Because you mean when you were miserable and you were devoting 95% of your energy to getting down the road and doing everything. And you had nothing else. Right. That's how most people do it over the road. You don't have to do it that way. But that's how most people do it. And you don't have to do it that way. But most people do. And those people who do seem to get stuck. They get stuck mentally. So stop getting stuck mentally. Just like, see, the thing about OTR is no one wants to do it. So it's easy to get into. But when you want to do local, everybody wants to do local. So you have to research the companies. Most good local companies do not advertise. I did not find rush transportation in the paper. I didn't find Falcon. Well, no, Falcon did advertise, but I didn't look. I didn't find them in the paper. But there were other companies better than them that still don't advertise because they don't have to. The turnover rate's not high. They don't hire 50 people a week like Rush and Maverick and all. I mean, not Rush, but Maverick and and Falcon, not Falcon, excuse me, but Swift and and all these companies. Right. They, they These big mega carriers have to hire 50, 60 people every terminal every single week or they'll go bust. Real companies that focus on long term employees don't. So if you have that year experience, Tokyo, and you are tired of doing over the road, Tokyo, it's time to quit. <laughs> Just quit. You there, man. You made it. You're shining, baby. You're shining. A lot of people tell you, oh, man, but there's no money in local again one of the problems people have is you're living when you're over the road you're living a false life you don't have rent you don't have light and gas you don't have uh, you're not just spontaneously going out to the movies you're not doing any of those things on average right that's how most people do it is that how everyone should do it like you can you live a life sure you can live a life out there otr there's smart guys who do it but most people don't do it that way they just focus on the truck and give up on everything else. I've been there. Did that. Stupid. But when you go local, the first thing you got to do is sit down and learn local jobs. Learn the local jobs. Completely different environment because these jobs don't have a high turnover rate. They ain't dealing with a trucker shortage. See, most guys go out back OTR because they get used to that catering to them, that that easy money, that easy. Oh, everybody wants to hire me. I'm so pretty. I'm so sexy, honey, because that's what they love, because those companies, like I said, need to hire 50 people a week. They need you. They need you. Right. But the company that's got 15 drivers, 20 drivers, and they got that one opening that happens every once in a blue moon. They don't need you. They don't need you. And those are the companies that are going to get you above 60 and above 70. Right. But they don't need you. They repeat, they don't need you. You need them. So you have to act like it. You have to go back to that whole reality of being interviewed. (laughs) You have to go and remember how to talk to people and have conversations and create relationships. That's how you do it. I did the same thing. When I first went off from OTR, I wanted that over the road. Ken, we just need a driver so bad. You're the greatest person alive. Right. That's what it's like when you OTR. It's all that hype up. Right. But you don't you don't really have to go chase that. They literally have books at the truck stop listing tons and tons of jobs. OTR, OTR, OTR. Because nobody wants to do it. <laughs> But when you want to go local, there's no magical books listing. No one's kissing your ass. You have to get off your ass and go look. 
it's going to be hard. It's going to take you a month, might take you a year to find that right company. You might even have to company hop a couple times. Local for you might be like me. I work for an over the road company, but that company has a run where I get home every night. You got to learn how to work it. And I only got this job because someone else was literally doing this, this job and talking about it. And I listened to it because I was doing this stuff called research. And that means you, when people talk about a job, you listen to the details. And I was like, I want to do that. And then I went and did that. I filled out the application. They had the exact thing I wanted. I was getting home. Originally, I had to work my way in because I was getting home three nights a week. Well, first, they they promised me home every night. Then they broke that promise because it's trucking. But <laughs> then I was home three days a week. Then kept working, 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 working. And then they opened up this one. And now I'm home every night. Right. But everything was like it was leading to that point. Right. But all started by doing research. Listen to this guy. Talk about the job. Find out if he's telling the truth. by listening to other truck drivers who have the job. Drive around in the parking lot. You know, doing my little spy thing. I tell you guys to do in my book. I always say it, find out where that company is, find out where the drivers are going to park and at the truck stop, go talk to the drivers, have a conversation, walk up to them and say, hey, are you getting home at least this amount of times a week? And you're either going to hear yes or no. I had a Swift driver walk up to me the other day and he said, uh, you man, uh, is it true that you make $1,400 a week? I said, hell no. <laughs> no. No, 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 I wish it was $1,400. No, no. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, thank you. Right. Again, this is that's bad research, by the way. If you want money, you have to remember you go chase money. Remember that if you want money, you got to go chase money. Right. So if that's not going research isn't going to help you find money. If you want the big money, like $1,400 a week or stuff like that, you're looking for unstable parts of trucking. Straight up. You're looking for car, you look at not car hauling. You're looking for um, uh, oil field money, right? This guy should go to the oil field. He should, and the questions he should be asking is, do you know any jobs paying in the range of $1,400 a week or more? Because that's what I want to make. And then there are guys who include gross when they quote what they make because this dude was working for Swift and I know the miles those guys are doing and what they're making on the account that we're on that they're on also it ain't nowhere near $1,400 a week. He wants to make $1,400 a week. The proper question should have been you ever heard any jobs paying that, that, that range that around that amount right? Question the other driver bring in their knowledge Right. Then they'll say, nah, I ain't never heard a job like that. Or, yeah, I know a guy over in the oil field. He's pulling in 2200 Or I'd have said, yeah, some of the food companies that hire people to unload the truck, yeah, they pay pretty good. They pay anywhere from thirteen to 1400 Right. Now, all that shit I don't want to do. <laughs> but you might want to do it. Good for you. you know? But anyway, guys. I'm going to end this. It's been long enough, me rambling, but let's start off. The Trucker Alliance is back at it again. They want to bring in uh, legislation to get rid of urine testing and have hair testing only. I'm not quite sure why they want to do it. They claim it's to test for opioids. It just doesn't seem like it. I, it just, it, it. It doesn't make any sense. I, I, it doesn't make any sense. It isn't going to lead them anywhere. It's not going to stop the real major problems we have in trucking, you know, which is alcoholism, right? Uh, un unhealthy truck drivers, right? Heart attack, strokes. We don't deal with that shit. We're too busy worried about sleep apnea. Uh, and, uh, you know, things like that. That's what we should be dealing with. But for some reason, they think this is hugely important. And if you're a truck driver, you need to pay attention to it because you are more likely to get hit with a false positive, damage your career in the industry, 
during a random drug test. And we are talking having hair tests during a random drug test. You know, having no urine tests is a bit crazy. But anyway, that's the first part. We talked about energy management. The fact that caffeine can last six to eight hours after you use it, after you take caffeine, you get that nip of coffee. You don't want to do that in the middle of your shift. You young guys who send me those emails and those messages talking about how do you drive so many hours, man, stop eating, eat before your shift and stop and don't eat until the end of your shift. It's called intermittent fasting. It will double your energy, dude. Literally, I promise you, it will take care of your energy. When you eat food, it takes energy to make energy, right? So it has to expend energy, and that makes that's what makes you sleepy. All right. And lastly, but not leastly, if you Tokyo have done a year Tokyo, <laughs> and you are tired of the game, you tired of, of being out there working up over at I believe you're still working over at Prime. If it's time to leave, buddy then it's time to bounce. It's time to find that job that is going to get you home and get you back to something that you resembles what you want, right? Because I don't know what you want, but that's what, and not just the Tokyo, but anybody out there who wants something other than OTR. That's it.